Welcome to Digital Charcuterie. I'm James. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate your time. If you're new here, hit subscribe. And if you like the video, feel free to hit the like button. Let's get right to it. Let's talk about Julian Rush. Who is Julian? Don't say day Rush in the Penguin. In the second episode, we were introduced to this character, Julian Rush. The name he lingers on his desk. We see it on the camera. We are made to see that this character's name is Julian Rush. And he's working very closely with Sophia Falcone. He, of course, is her psychiatrist. And then we learn, of course, that he was with her in Arkham. We see that in a little bit of the flashback in that second episode, part of her light therapy that she's going through. We see Julian in the background, but then we get a better understanding of who Julian Rush is in episode four, Sophia Falcone's villain origin story as it is being referred to. We see that he actually might care for Sophia. He tells her she's safe. He, when she's out, he really wants her to know that that is a safe environment, that she can be who she is within, with him in that world. Now, of course, in episode five, we see that he wants to join her, right? He shows up to her house unannounced when she's looking over her mother's jacket. And he says that he knew it was her. When he saw the Falcone family was killed on the news, he knew that it was Sophia. And he wants to feel that. He wants to feel that rush that she had. He wants that in his life. I want to hear what you guys think of Julian Rush in the comments down below. I read and reply to all of them in Arkham as she's having some of her therapy put on her to kind of transition her into becoming a, the villain that she's going to be. Part of the torture that was laid on her by her father, Carmine Falcone. We see a glimpse of Julian kind of touch Dr. Ventress, Mirman, Dr. Ventress's hand and saying, what if she's not lying? They want you to believe that he believes her, that he's following her game. And when he's out, he says, Alberto and I got you out. We trust you. We want the best life for you, blah, 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 blah. And he wants to go away. Or he wants her to go away to Sicily as her family uh, declares. Of course, she ends up offing her entire family. A family that will not treat you like cannon fodder in a fruitless war against the Moronis. And in that moment, he looks at her. He gives her a blank stare. It's all very awkward. I had a lot of comments saying this is, it was an awkward exchange. And it was. But I don't think it was awkward in a bad way. I think it was calculated. This whole show has been very calculated, right? All the characters, all their ambitions, all their motives is very calculated. And I believe that shot of Julian looking at Sofia Gigante, don't say Falcone, was meant to to invoke something with us that we'll learn about later. There's something at play with Julian, and we're going to talk about it in this video. But the question has been raised since we first met Julian Rush. Who is this guy? In the grand scheme of things, who is Julian Rush? Is this an alias? Is he somebody that we all know? First points in the first video I did, which you can watch here, I think, he, he, I suspected he might be Scarecrow, and it wasn't just me. A lot of people suspected he might be Scarecrow. But then, of course, other people started typing up. Maybe he's Hugo Strange. And there are other characters that he could potentially be. And in this video, I want to discuss who he might be who, and ultimately who I think he will be, whether that is somebody from Batman's Rogue Gallery or he's just Julian Rush. We're going to find out right now. So let's just start off. What if he's just Julian Rush? What if he's not a character from the rogues gallery? What if he's not based on a comic book character? What if he's a brand new character invented for this show? Would that be boring? I think sometimes we overthink who people might be because we want everything to connect and we want to feel, you know, we want to talk about these theories and rumors and it's a lot of fun. But at the end of the day, sometimes these stories, they don't, a lot of the time, they don't pan out that way. They just are who they are. Their surface level, it is Julian Rush. But we're not playing that game here. Uh-uh, I'm going to go on now and talk about it. But look, but if he is just Julian Rush, I think there is a deeper meaning to this character than who he is. And I do think that he weaves his way into Batman villain lore. I think he is a part of Batman's history. He is not a rogues gallery villain per se, but he is a part of something bigger. And that part of something is the Court of Owls. <laughs> My thoughts from the beginning are something is off with Dr. Julian Rush, right? He probably, most likely, in some way, is manipulating Sophia. One thing we know about this series is Penguin says whatever he needs to say to convince anybody of what he needs, right? And Sophia is the exact same thing. They're master manipulators. And it wouldn't be surprising if a character like Julian Rush, Dr. Julian Rush, did the exact same thing. If he was a master manipulator, if he did and said all the right things to Sophia to manipulate her and get her on his side or learn something that she knows. If you think about it, when we first meet him, he says, are you safe? He wants to make sure that she is safe is the one key. But also when she's in light therapy, she says, 
He says to her, what did you see? What is so important about what she may or may not seen in the light therapy session that she had with Dr. Julian Rush? There's something in there that he wants out of her and he wants to learn that information. As a psychiatrist with access to Gotham's elite, Dr. Rush would be the perfect candidate for the Court of Owls, an organization that prides itself on maintaining control over the city's upper class. His connections to influential figures like Sophia and potentially others in Gotham's political and criminal landscape, after all, he was in Arkham, he did work in Arkham, makes him a valuable asset. He could also be using his position to gather secrets from other wealthy clients, all of which would further the court's long-term plans. I really believe that the Batman series is heading towards the Court of Owls, whether that happens in Batman 2 or Batman 3 remains to be seen. But overall, Gotham, I've said this in every review I've had of the Penguin, and I believe this of Batman as well, but Gotham is the big bad of this, right? These criminals exist. That's one thing I love about this world is the criminals, the rogues gallery of Batman villains already exist in this world because Gotham breeds criminals. Ark, we saw that with Arkham in episode 4, and that's the understanding is that Gotham, Arkham, Gotham breeds criminals criminals i want to talk about somebody that he might be that goes all the way back to 1939 i'm thinking could he be dr death one thing i like about dr death is they're using all these really low mid-level low tier villains right not the most name brand ones obviously we have penguins a name brand in the movie we had penguin batman riddler joker the four main baddies of batman but as it goes, we start to get more little characters. Remember, we had Magpie a few weeks ago. We had the twins and the Batman. And they like to use these lesser known villains. And Dr. Death is not, he's not well known, but he's not unknown at the same time. Dr. Death has a history of working in the shadows and manipulating people from behind the scenes. A role that aligns with Rush's covert and sinister manipulation of Sophia's fragile mind. In The Penguin, Rush's knowledge of trauma and red light therapy and possible involvement in introducing a mind-altering drug into Gotham streets makes him a prime candidate. None of you are any different. But you know, there's a good chance that he's Hugo Strange. You have not won. You cannot win. Hugo Strange is known for his sinister psychological manipulation and unethical experiments on Arkham patients. Hugo Strange would fit well with Dr. Rush's background as Sophia Falcone's psychiatrist. Strange has been depicted in comics as a villain who often exploits patients for his own twisted agendas, much like Rush appears to be manipulating Sophia. Strange also has a history of dealings with the Falcone family in the comics, notably borrowing money from them to fund his experiments, creating a direct connection to Sophia. We know that the drug was coming out of Arkham. We know that she and Alberto had a part of the drug. He was in Arkham also. And also, don't forget, in the time that Sophia's there, in that decade that she is there, Julian Rush is with her the entire tenure, right? He's with her from beginning to end. All the other doctors leave. And she seems to think that they are actually the heads of the, that they are in charge at Arkham, right? They're the head doctor at Arkham. But what if Julian Rush is actually the one in charge the entire time? He left Arkham, he says. He claims he left Arkham, but did he really? And was he working with or for those other doctors or were they working with and for Julian Rush? That remains to be seen. Part of where I, I think the Hugo Strange could work, I think the name though, like going Julian Rush to Hugo Strange, that's such a leap. I, I know it can be done and it's not, it's not, Totally off. I think the way that you have to make it work is you make him this world's version of Hugo Strange. It's not quite Hugo Strange because that's such a a lie to the audience. It's such a fake misdirect. Like it, it's almost unfair to the audience to have a character name that and then go in there. But worse things have been done. Let's move on to the one that I first suspected that I no longer really believe. But we're going to talk about it and we're going to convince me and maybe you that he could be the Scarecrow. Jonathan Crane, a.k.a. Julian Rush. The Scarecrow. Scarecrow, of course, is a master of fear and psychological manipulation, which we see in the second episode, kind of, right, with the light fair. This all aligns with Scarecrow's signature fear toxin and manipulation of victims' minds. Scarecrow's ability to evoke terror through hallucinogenic drugs could mirror the unexplored aspects of Russia's therapy methods with Sophia, especially considering her troubled mental state. This could all be a product of of scarecrow's drug that he's putting on his patients we know she took it in arkham she's obviously having some kind of therapy sessions with him now who knows what he's injecting her with beyond that or his ultimate goals with arkham we're getting you know images of him There's, he's looking more and more sinister the more we see julian rush he looks a little bit more sinister so his motives aren't quite clear and i don't think they're for the better good of gotham or the people involved within it this is one that i really 
at first I was like, okay, the namesake. And then I didn't believe it, but I kind of get more and more on the ball of this one as this series goes. And as I said, he seems to be getting darker and darker. And that's Calendar Man. Julian Day, Julian Rush, a rush to, to get somewhere. You know, you're in a hurry, rush, day. I don't know. There's similarities there. Maybe, maybe not. Probably not. That's a stretch. But, okay, his name, they changed his name. They changed the last name. But what other similarities could there be? Right now, not so much. However, when we look at the source material that they're using to adapt into the series and the films as well, speaking specifically of Long Halloween and Dark Victory, you start to look at Calendar Man's purpose within those comics, in those storylines, and then you try to figure out if you can connect the dots with the show and Sophia Falcone. Now, obviously, Alberto Falcone, the holiday killer, is not the holiday killer in the show, and he's dead. So was there a holiday killer? Maybe we're seeing the beginnings of the holiday killer, but they're doing to the holiday killer what they did to the hangman, and they use the hangman to be Carmine Falcone, and maybe in this iteration, the holiday killer could be Sophia Falcone, Hear me out. Eventually, she could progress and evolve into the Holiday Killer to seek revenge on her brother's death. All the same kind of stuff, but use the Holiday Killer instead. Then you have this character of Calendar Man, who got out of, who was a doctor in Arkham, got out of Arkham, and worked closely with Sophia. At some point in this series, they could probably find out he's doing something with these drugs, or he's connected to these drugs in some capacity. He gets put into prison, and then all of a sudden you can have your Batman and Calendar Man interactions a la the comics. I feel, like I said, this one... Just because of the calendar man and who he is, I kind of feel like they're going, they could easily go in that direction. Not necessarily they're going in that direction, but it's an easy progression to take. The connection seems pretty weak to me still, but Calendar Man is a lesser known villain in the Batman universe who focuses on specific dates of psychological manipulation. Though less likely than the other ones, this could be an interesting twist for a character with an obscure comic history. And that's what you want to use. You use obscure comic characters, right? The lesser known they are, the more creative freedom I think these creators can have with them that won't piss off fans, right? Because if you, you know, if you do something drastic with the Joker, turn him into a snake, Ninja Turtles, fans might not appreciate that so much. It works in Ninja Turtles, I'm not complaining. But Calendar Man is someone that, you know, he kind of is, you know, other than the comics mentioned, he's not really that serious of a villain. They use him kind of as a joke in the Suicide Squad movie you know so that's someone that they could use and they could twist his his backstory around all they wanted to use it and manipulate their story the way that they want another side of this could be that he is not the big bad but he is working with the big bad something that i am really becoming more and more inclined with as the series goes on that he is somebody not to be trusted but not because of necessarily who he is or who what he is going to bring but because of the person or people he is working for so who could he be he could just be an alias, Professor Milo. He's never been a direct assistant to Hugo Strange necessarily, but Professor Achilles Milo has occasionally worked with or been associated with Strange in various iterations. Both characters share an interest in psychological manipulation, unethical scientific experimentation. This kind of feels a little bit more like who Julian Rush is, but again, the name. Why, why make that change in the name unless this is just an iteration of this character, which brings me to the one that I am mostly leaning on as a character, as who he is. This is where I'm heading. I'm thinking Hugo Strange is maybe never mentioned in the show, but will ultimately at some point we'll reveal that Hugo Strange is a big bad in Arkham Asylum at some point within the Batman universe. And Julian Rush will understand was an assistant of Hugo Strange. So those are my thoughts on who Dr. Julian Rush is could be or will be or never will be let me know what you guys think in the comments down below who do you think julian rush is do you have your own julian rush theories who do you suspect he will be or is he just going to be plain old julian rush sophia's right hand man probably gunned down at some point by victor let me know in the comments down below i read them and i reply to all of them as i said anytime we got ourselves some goddamn respect thanks for watching everybody really appreciate it give us a like and subscribe and until next time maybe the master of your own universe